One more argument that I want to go over is the, the whole traits argument. Name me a trait that, if present in animals, allows us to do the same in humans as we do to them, right? Why are we even playing this game? Who set these rules? What are we supposed to do? Just let people have incoherent positions and not call them out and fear that Leo Venus is going to think we're playing a game? Amazing. Hey, what is going on, guys? So today we're going to be responding to a video from the brother of Journey Ve Sorry, I mean John Venus, Leo Venus. And that video is titled, Meat is not a moral... 10 years vegan doctor. I contemplated not making this video, but I figured I might as well and just give you guys some sort of idea on how to respond to some of the things that he says in the video. It's also funny because when I first started out on YouTube, I started beefing with his brother on his whole ex-vegan journey or whatever you want to call it. And this beef included serious responses, satirical responses. And I even got an interview from John Venus concerning his actions and how he, you know, ended up leaving the vegan movement. That made for a very interesting conversation. So it seems like due to simply the tradition of this channel, I might as well make at least one response to Leo Venus. I hope you enjoyed that appeal to tradition fallacy at the start of the video. Before I get into it, just know I probably won't be responding to everything. If I don't respond to something he says, I either agreed with it or just didn't care to. There's a lot that he covers in the video. Let's get into it. So without further ado, let's go over some of the biggest misconceptions that exist in the vegan community that I have come across. And the first one I think is going to be just from how people reacted on my Instagram when I even posted some of these opinions, which is meat is murder. Murder is actually a word that denotes the crime of killing another person. So one person killing another person, that is murder. So already from the definition of the word, we're already using this word incorrectly which when we do so, we sound like very confused individuals. Yeah, so this is a pretty simple one. There are definitions of the word murder that apply to what we do to animals. I'm surprised that after 10 years of being vegan, Leo didn't know this. Obviously, when vegans call the killing of animals for meat murder, they're not referring to some legal definition that exclusively applies to humans. That would be pretty stupid. Next. Next one that drinking milk is rape. See, I'm almost cringing saying this out loud. And maybe people will hear like, oh my God, what a crazy person we have up here in the mountains. No, again, this is, a, again, another word that denotes a crime between human beings, which is the action of uh, forcing yourself upon someone and forcing them to have sexual intercourse with you against their own will right without consent. Two very violent, very traumatic, very, you know, accepted unethical words, unethical actions that we are mixing in with the act of eating meat. It's no wonder people who hear this think vegans are completely insane. Yeah, so this is an interesting part. The definition of the word rape is exclusively based in some kind of inclusion of sexual intention and therefore animals during forced artificial insemination, having their sexual organs forcibly stimulated or even penetrated for reasons outside of sexual pleasure wouldn't technically be considered rape. But let's be honest, these acts that take place during forced artificial insemination possess all of the characteristics needed for an action to be considered rape besides a sexual intention. And surely we understand that the reason rape is wrong isn't solely the sexual intention present when somebody is committing rape, but instead the part where you're forcing yourself or an object onto or even into an animal or their sexual organs. So I would argue that the reason rape is generally considered wrong is the same reason we ought considered forced artificial insemination wrong. You're forcing yourself onto somebody else and violating the fuck out of them. Maybe so Leo is happy. Instead of saying dairy is rape or supports rape, we can say dairy supports forcibly stimulating and penetrating innocent animals. Sounds about as bad, I think. And the other side note as well, of course, is that eating meat is something natural. Like I said, almost every person on the planet does it. It is completely normal. So you're talking about something that almost every single person does as compared to rape and murder, which luckily for us, a very, very small minority of human beings engage in this behavior and this activity. Yeah, so I'm not sure why after his whole rape spiel that he decides to say that eating meat and all this is natural and something totally normal. First off, how is artificial insemination natural or even animal farming at all? Secondly, he mentions the consumption of animal products as something completely normal and contrasts this with how it isn't normal to consider rape and murder ethical. But it's clear that when vegans claim that meat is murder or dairy is rape, they're referring to what their decision to purchase animal products entails. Somebody could be opposed to rape and murder while simultaneously supporting an industry that requires both to function. For example, animal agriculture. Except they'll be super pedantic here and say that it doesn't really support rape because there's no sexual intention, but it does support forcibly penetrating and stimulating animals, which sounds probably just as psychotic as rape in my opinion. Next misconception. For people who have tried eating vegan, 
and didn't make it, they were doing it wrong. So notice just before I said, I think many people can be healthy on a vegan diet with the right supplements, myself included. I feel great on a vegan diet and I have no problem sustaining this lifestyle. But there are a lot of people who don't. And I have experienced, by the way, I used to believe this myself. I used to believe mm, they're doing it wrong. But there are so many people who genuinely want to be vegan. They've tried again and again and their health declines when they go on a vegan diet, which makes sense when you put someone on a diet which is unnatural for their species. It makes sense that some people aren't going to tolerate it that well. So here he calls the notion that a person who quit the vegan diet was doing it wrong a myth, but he doesn't spell out who in particular he's talking about here and how it is false to say that they did it wrong. He just makes some weird appeal to nature and says it makes sense to think that some people who consume a vegan diet, which isn't a natural diet, are going to be incapable of being healthy on that diet. And their health declines when they go on a vegan diet, which makes sense when you put someone on a diet which is unnatural for their species. It makes sense that some people aren't going to tolerate it that well. I mean, what is the argument for that? Also, I agree there are certain people who can't personally manage being vegan. For example, somebody who is brain dead or somebody living in an area that lacks the resources required to be vegan. But when talking about a person who has all the tools needed to sustain a vegan diet, including proper supplementation, I don't have a reason to believe they can't sustain a vegan diet. Now there is 8 billion people in the world, so perhaps there's some condition I'm simply unaware of. Maybe there is somebody allergic to the vast majority of plant foods, I'm not sure. But here's what I do know. The vegan diet not being natural is not enough information to help me reasonably infer that a properly planned vegan diet that includes proper supplementation of nutrients we would have otherwise obtained naturally cannot work for everyone. This one I know a lot of people will disagree with me on. Vegans are not morally superior to non-vegans. And I say this again, vegans are not morally superior to non-vegans. A lot of people will argue, oh no, meat eaters, they're animal abuse supporters. No, they are not. Most people in the world are against animal abuse. And by the way, there is absolutely a way of producing meat without animal abuse. It is just that the way things are today with factory farming is not conducive to making and producing meat with animal welfare in mind. It's just not the industrial process does not take that into account. So the actual meat in itself does not have to include animal abuse. So here Leo says that vegans are not morally superior to non-vegans. Now I agree with him to the extent that being vegan isn't going to necessarily make somebody morally superior or better than somebody else. There's other things that we can do outside of being vegan that can, you know, tip somebody on the moral scale or the moral superiority scale. But imagine we hold all things constant. So you have two people, everything about them is the same, except one is vegan and one isn't. Yeah, I'm gonna say that the vegan is morally superior, but who really cares about being morally superior anyway? Vegans, at least the ones I'm familiar with, don't go vegan with this sort of like intention to be better than other people and, and you know, shout down other people. It's just because they think that going vegan is the right thing to do and they don't want to support animal rights violations. Leo goes on to say that most people are against animal abuse as though a person's personal attitudes are all we go off of when determining if they are morally superior to somebody else. Obviously, a person can tell you that they're personally against animal abuse while still supporting it themselves. We don't just go off of somebody's moral attitudes or what they tell you they think when determining if they're a good person. We also go off of their actions or what their actions, you know, put in demand or cause. Later on, Leo mentions there are ways to produce meat that don't involve animal abuse. Now, I think in principle, this is true or even going to become true once cultivated meat requires zero animal inputs whatsoever. For example, Upside Foods, a company that was just approved by the USDA and FDA to sell cultivated meat, has the goal of removing animal inputs from their entire production process. I discussed in the past that I thought they did reach this point by saying that they have an animal component free medium, but they still do use small amounts of fetal bovine serum in their production process, but they are seeking to eradicate this process over time. But yeah, Leo doesn't mention anything like this. In fact, he just keeps bringing up how there are ways to produce meat without animal abuse without actually explaining how. We just have to infer that he's talking about animal agriculture that doesn't include factory farming because in his little ramble about how it's possible to create meat without abuse, he just mentions that the majority of industrial farming is currently what's, you know, being supported. And he uses this as a defense for the claim that you could have meat without abuse. It's just not common right now or something like that. And to that, I just say, I still consider it pretty abusive to breed animals into a happy existence only to murder them when they have so many more years to live. This method may entail less abuse than factory farms, but there's still abuse the other one that i that i got a lot is uh eating meat is wrong right it's immoral to eat meat uh meat eating is evil all this kind of stuff unethical let me go through this one real quickly this one got a lot of attention on my instagram so <clears throat> morality by definition is 
something subjective. It is something that we humans decide is incorrect, right? We don't think that any other animal has the concept of morality at all. So we have created this concept in order to separate right from wrong. Now, by definition, if this is subjective, this is going to vary. This is going to depend on who you are, where you come from, what culture you're from, what religion you're from, what interests you have, what experiences you have, what friends you surround yourself with. It is going to vary a lot from one person to the next. So yeah, obviously morality is subjective. Whenever we call something morally wrong, we're saying this with respect to our own moral system. This is the case when people object to murder, slavery, human trafficking, etc. But listen to this insanity coming up. So if you have something that is subjective and which varies a lot from person to person, how are we going to make a standard of morality that works for everyone? Well, in a democratic world, that means we are going to go with what most people think is okay. So by definition, most people think it is completely okay to eat meat. And who are we, the vegans of less than 1% of the population? We are an extreme minority. Who are we to be so arrogant as to tell everybody else that they are wrong and we are correct? If we seriously go around pointing fingers at the masses doing that again we're only ostracizing only separating only isolating ourselves and minimizing the effect that we can have on people outside of our community so wait a minute if 99 percent of the population was committing some crazy immorality let's say something like uh human slavery and there's one percent of the population we'll call them abolitionists and there's one percent of people are doing activism and telling these people who support human slavery that they're doing something wrong would leo's response be who are you to tell these 99 percent of people who are pro-slavery that they are wrong and you are correct you're going to ostracize yourself from others with this activism i mean what a weird response does leo hold this position for any case in which a group is a minority fighting against an immorality that the majority support wild stuff here guys Another reason why we are not morally superior to mediators is because we are also causing death of animals, innocent animals, all the time when we eat the vegan food, right? So all of the industrial agriculture that happens today, both for animal foods and for plant foods, do kill animals. Lots of rodents, rabbits, frogs, you name it, are getting killed by the millions every year so that we can eat our vegan food. Now, of course, it is probably quite a, a smaller effect, right? And we can also say, well, a lot of that food is going to the animals. Yes, correct. But the point here is that we are talking about a difference of degree, not a difference of quality. We are both doing the same things. We are both putting animal lives underneath ourselves so that we can live our modern comfortable lives. And this includes both vegans and non-vegans. So for you to say, I don't kill animals for my diet, so I am a better person, that is very clearly hypocritical because you are also killing animals for your diet. You might just be killing less animals than the people who are eating meat. Yes, yeah, so we have the classic crop deaths though argument here. We'll keep this very simple. Leo is bringing up the fact that animals die for crop production as a justification for the claim that vegans are not morally superior to meat eaters. He goes on to say that sure, maybe we kill less, but we are still killing animals. So don't say you're morally superior or not having any animals killed for your diet. Now, first off, whether your diet killing less animals than a meat eater is going to make you think you are morally superior to a meat eater is going to depend on the normative ethical system a particular vegan has. A vegan who is a a pure utilitarian could claim that they're morally superior, at least with respect to diet, than a meat eater, because their diet generates less disutility than, say, a meat eater. Secondly, Leo is bringing up that crop fields still cause death, but hasn't demonstrated that crop fields actually increase overall death when replacing wild fields. Reducing animal death and suffering is one of the things I, and many vegans, care about, and it isn't clear to me that replacing wildland, which is land that includes animals suffering from predation, disease, starvation, and all other negative things which nature has to offer, with cropland, actually generates more overall death and suffering. In fact, they could possibly generate less overall death and be a good thing when compared to wild fields. So this whole idea that if a vegan chooses to live, they have to live with the fact that they're causing an increase in animal death has not yet been substantiated by Leo. Sure, animal death is entailed, but if a vegan cares about reducing animal suffering and death or animal rights violations, you're going to have to demonstrate that their support of crop fields actually causes this. Next one then. The world one day will be vegan. No, it will not. Like I said, not everybody can thrive on a vegan diet and it is a natural part of a human diet. We've always done it and we probably always will. 
And so I definitely do not believe that the world will ever become vegan. Yeah, so this isn't totally clear. Even if we do assume that there are specific people who can't thrive on a plant-based diet with proper supplementation. This is because if we get to a point where all animal products are able to be cultivated without the use of animals, these foods can be considered vegan and therefore even these hypothetical people that can't be healthy without animal products could obtain animal products in a vegan way. I'm not claiming we will ever see a vegan world. I mean, we still have a world with sexism and racism and other terrible things, but maybe we'll get to a point where the world is mostly vegan. Who knows? The other argument I get as well is, oh, it's natural. So we should do, oh, we should rape each other and kill each other because that's natural too. I've already kind of covered that, that in the past in the video as well. Uh, it's kind of a five-year-old level argument, completely silly argument. So please don't use it. Again, it makes us sound like absolute fools. So this part is a little odd. I'm not sure if he is referring to vegans who take him to be justifying the killing and eating of animals with the fact that it is natural, who then ask him if killing and rape are moral because they are natural. And if that is the case, and he is referring to killing and eating animals as moral because it is natural, I would take this to be a very reasonable response. I mean, it's one of the best responses you can give to somebody who is trying to justify an action with the fact that it's natural. One more argument that I want to go over is the, the whole traits argument. Name me a trait that if present in animals allow us to do the same in humans as we do to them right why are we even playing this game who set these rules there's a reason why murder is a word that only denotes an action between humans and the same for rape there is a difference between human beings and animals we all inherently know this you know you could even say that the trait is <laughs> that they are non-human so here he refers to name the trait as a game and then he says who set these rules name the trait is simply a consistency test one of its main uses is to make sure a person's moral system is free from contradiction or not incoherent. You know, like, makes sense. And remember, he said, who set these rules? When he says rules, is he referring to the laws of logic? And again, why is he referring to this as a game? Do you think Leo responds to other people calling out inconsistencies in other people's positions on other topics a game? I hope not. I mean, it's a very good thing to, you know, let someone know, hey, you know, your position literally just doesn't make any sense. It's contradictory. What are we supposed to do? Just let people have incoherent positions and not call them out and fear that Leo Venus is going to think we're playing a game? Amazing. So later on, he refers to the wrong definition of murder again. Then he claims there is a difference between humans and animals. We all inherently know this. Now, obviously, there are many differences between humans and animals, but we're not just trying to capture whether or not there are differences. We're trying to capture morally relevant differences that justify the differential treatment between humans and animals. And he ends up saying that the trait could be that animals just aren't human, which leads to a pretty hilarious place Places on Leo's view. Let's say we found out tomorrow that Leo isn't human. Let's say we found out he is a Kryptonian, and so is his brother John. Is it now okay to murder him for a burger as long as we treat him nice before? Of course not. All right, guys, well, that's the end of the video and probably the last time I'll ever be addressing a Venus on video. Thank you so much for watching. If you support my work and want to get early access to it, you can click the link in the pinned comment and support me on Patreon. And if you don't know, I do have a book going over most, if not all, of the anti-vegan arguments you're going to hear online. If you want to get that as well, that'll be linked in the pinned comment. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, fuck off. I don't want anything to do with you. Don't ever speak to me again. You're a fucking piece of shit. Even even vegans don't get your weird, stupid, wannabe sense of irony here. Who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude.